So right now I'm joined by Alex and Fabian, who are developers of Mist, the decentralized application browser for Ethereum. Today they made a stunning presentation uh, at DevCon where they displayed, uh, where they basically showed us the browser and the things it could do. So first let's have an introduction from Alex and then from Fabian. So I'm Alex van der Sande, I'm the lead designer for Ethereum. I'm Fabian Vogelsteller and I'm the lead dev developer for Ethereum and uh, also the builder of building Mist and Web3.js partly. So for, for our listeners who haven't actually seen Mist in action, uh, can we have a short explanation of what it's supposed to do? Okay, so Mist is what we want for, for the end user, for the common user to be able to interact with co smart contracts. Right now, the only way to interact with Ethereum is using the command line interface. And in the end, what we want Mist to do is for, for interacting with contracts should be as easy as using a website. And it's a decentralized app browser because we will be using Swarm and IPFS in order to be able to download all the content. So any the app, applications actually, the, 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 the whole application, yeah. yeah. So it will, any application that you're using would never go offline. So yeah, so the idea is that it's a browser, it downloads the applications from, um, from Swarm or from uh, IPFS-backed Swarm and um, it runs basically only talks to the Ethereum blockchain, runs the smart contracts as like the backend as a database. So, uh, so in the morning they demonstrated uh, a decent like we could the own, for lack of a better word a decentralized autonomous organization on the blockchain or a company <laughs> on the blockchain. Yeah. So essentially, what they did was they they created a contract and that contract had some funds. Um, uh, the contract had shares that people could own and then you could do various kinds of actions on that contract like you know um, let's say three people get together and they pull 100 ether into the fund and one of them wants to spend 50 ether then he could raise a motion to spend it in a particular way and the other people could vote for that motion and approve it. So it was uh, a very cool idea, and maybe we could just walk through how how it works technically. What 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 parts of this run on Ethereum? What parts of it run on IPFS? And what is happening behind the scenes when a user creates an a company like that? Okay, so first we have to differentiate because the the demonstration was on the wallet. So what we are doing with the wallet is that Mist is. Mist is supposed to be the front-end interface for any kind of contract, but before what we we have been developing the wallet, which is uh, a completely separate, its own standalone dApp basically. Yeah, it's it's standalone dApp running inside the Mist browser, but you, right now it doesn't look like the Mist browser because we take in away the menu and the browsing uh, bar, and it's basically just running right now the wallet uh, dApp. And the contract itself, basically the DAO contract, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization contract, well, it basically, it was basically a mixture of multiple contracts. It was once the DAO contract, then on the other hand, it was a token contract, which represented the shares. The shares were basically tied to this uh, DAO, this Decentralized Organization, and he takes away uh, in account when any kind of voting takes place between parties. Um, for example, moving funds, paying for stuff, like where everybody votes on whatever happens with, uh, with the funds in the organization. It takes the shares as a basis to how much each person uh, has weight in, in, the, in the vote. Uh, what I think very interesting and fascinating about that particular contract is that the democracy contract has about 100 lines of code, including comments. And, it, and you can upload it in a few minutes. It will cost you, at the current exchange rate, like less than one cent of the dollar. And yet, it can build an organization that has all its finances completely transparent, and it works better. And it works better than any real organization out there because the money simply simply cannot be stolen. And it works better than any other democracy out there because the the votes are completely transparent and and you cannot in any way alter or change a vote. So what, that's why I really like to showcase that. And on the wallet, what we were able to do is that the current wallet allows you to interact with any contract, given that you know a, a little bit of information about it. 
meaning that you don't even need to build an application. If you just get those 100 lines of code, copy it from somewhere and use it on the wallet, you can deploy your own organization and keep your money there. And because it is able to interact with other contracts, which is one of the things I really like about the, the Ethereum, is that it can interact with other contracts, meaning that you can use that democracy to execute other contracts. So for example, you could hold it, use it to hold gold, let's say gold certificates, and those, though anything that you wanted to move those golds would be subject to a vote, just like anything else you want in that democracy. Okay. So yeah, you basically can daisy chain any kind of number of contracts and any number of of like actions so contracts can own other contracts they can create other contracts and if you want to have like as a basis this kind of proxy DAO contract then everything is subject to a vote exactly like you say yeah so uh, so so perhaps perhaps there are, there have been two a lot of different concepts introduced so I'll just summarize so um, so so there are many many parts to it one part is the is the is a contract which is basically uh, a company or an organization that coordinates people and the wallet that that you have produced is basically something that a user can use uh, to interact with the contract like uh, send funds to the contract or uh, pass motions on the contract etc and uh, and and the third thing you mentioned was uh, that your your design your wallet is somehow also in interfacing with IPFS or Swarm. Not, what not is yet, that? Not, not yet. yet. <laughs> so okay. The, the, the reason we've built, we've built wallet is that uh, we realized that Mist. We had a lot of work to do in Mist, and it was very far away. And we really wanted to be able to to have something out that people could test it and give feedbacks. And the wallet was a great example because the wallet is actually the first dApp that we can develop on Mist. And in order to be able to build that wallet, we had to build a lot of things inside Mist. And we actually figured out a lot of things that we needed from Geth, which is the Ethereum model browser there. So by building this one single app, we were able really able to make a better Mist and a better Geth. So what we are doing now is that we just took Mist we took all the browser parts out of it, and we are distributing it with a single DAP. And what this single DAP allows you is to get Ether, send Ether, get any cryptocurrency that is based on Ethereum and keep it, and, and upload any new cryptocurrencies, and upload any kind of contracts, and interact with any kind of contracts. So what were the challenges in, in, in building, building the first, uh, in your, uh, building your wallet? So currently, uh, building dApps. So the doing, ba doing doing basic things is actually very easy. But like, if you want to have complex dApps, so there are a few challenges our our API still have. So for example, like to confirm transactions yourself, and knowing that they actually like uh, are X blocks old and so on. Like this is not yet so easy as I would like to have it. For example, I would like to see some kind of subscription you subscribe to, and it tells you when it was mine. It tells you when it was. Um, um, confirmed or so currently you have to do a lot of these kind of things manually so if you really want to be safe so simple things are easy if you want to make this complex things safe then you have to put a little bit more work on it but it's already very uh, flexible and so the thing what so when mist comes out it will be actually um, fairly easy to just basically load any kind of javascript application inside mist you have the web3 object right away available you have a connection to the ethereum node right away you see an account or zero accounts as much as the user wants the dapp to see so because the user can control actually what the dapps are seeing so what kind of identity they see from you and with this you can right away start uh, building stuff so we also provide a set of um, so we build the whole things with Meteor as a framework just because it gives us a great tool to build interfaces fast and um, very like um, cohesive. And we build also tools for ourselves and for others to easily build dApps like a CSS framework in a simplistic form. Also just pieces you can put in and you already have something working and um, interacting with your contract. So this should be fairly easy for people to get started with this. Um, there's also coming um, a publication subscription API. So currently a lot of things you have to request for. You constantly have to ask the state, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. 
So in the future, we'll be simply subscribing to specific events. So we are also probably in, in the cryptocurrency space, like one of the first ones to have these like more modern web technology API accesses. And so I think like it's looking really good, but it's still like in development. So Mist will still take a few months because it's technically already working. So if you want to download it today and like load your dApp in it, it works. But if you want to have an onboarding process, account management, and all these kind of things which an end user needs to really deal with the stuff, so this still is in the making. So, it is so it's a bit unclear to me. Uh, what is unclear to me is what is the vision behind Mist? Like I can I can see that you have a wallet today that you can uh, that you can use to store funds, um, send funds, maybe create contracts like organizations. But uh, you, you refer to the fact that there is going to be Mist, which is going to be released later, which is going to be a full-blown browser. What will be the difference between your current wallet and Mist B? What's the vision for Mist? Yeah, so, well, what we are trying to do is that we really believe in trying to ship as much code as possible and as, and as, mu as often as we can. So the wallet is actually like Mist Zero in a sense because it allows you to interact basically with, with some contracts. But in order to do that, it's not really very, it's, it's, a, it's very geeky, it's very technical. You, ha you are interacting directly with function calls and variable names, and you have to know how the contract works in order to be able to do it. The best way in order to interact with contracts would be to build a custom CSS and HTML interface for them. Um, to, to build an interface, and the web technology is great for building interfaces. So what we want to do is that Mist would allow you to download a lot of interfaces for contracts. And those interfaces for contracts, you would be downloading them from a BitTorrent-like technology, like APFS and, 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 and the browser, and, and Swarm. So actually, it, like the, the, main, the main idea is it is a browser which allows you to later have a dApp store, browse dApps, which, uh, which you can just select and install or run. Basically, you just run it. And it will be locally downloaded to a machine and executed. And for you, it looks just like a web page, behaves like a web page, but it's kind of like downloaded from this decentralized network, run all locally, and everything is basically just on your machine. And so the whole idea is it's supposed to be a real browser, for like a normal browser is an interface container for all kind of interfaces so all the kind of web applications you're accessing in websites so it will be similar to this probably in the first time a lot of people will use just um, web hosted uh, websites and web applications which use a node which is run on the browser uh, on the server side and they basically just do the key signing in the dapp itself so to make it like secure and safe or untrusted in this can, the sense. And I think like MIS will be more, once people really understand the benefit of dApps and decentralized applications, and they have already a few and have a use case for them, then they will download MIST to run them on a daily basis, to have them always on their machine, to interact with the funds, to have whatever their pension fund or their family fund, or do whatever kind of things they want to do in this Ethereum smart contract world. I, I think one of the key differences I see between a normal browser actually and MIST yeah, that's a nice question. is that uh, a browser, just like the name and the history, is about visiting a lot of multiple web pages to read information. It's like the, yeah. the, the original idea was you have a bunch of documents linked together by, by hyperlinks. Mm -hmm. And the point of MIST is actually using apps. So I, re I really see that the most common case for MIST will be that you will have like three, four, five, and X number of apps installed, and you'll be spending most of your time inside there just running those few applications specific for Ethereum. And of course, you can add some more, you can add later, but you won't be, a you won't be spending the, your time in MIST like browsing a bunch of different things. Which you actually could do. So like yeah. one, once we have actually Swarm running, you can also like discover content in Swarm itself. So you're accessing, accessing like a, a data uh, world, data network, a decentralized data network like browsing swarm could also will also probably be fun and interesting though like it's really like meant as an application container where you run your decentralized applications it's, it provides the node it provides all the things in ethereum uh, uh, dapp needs 
and um, yeah, it's basically the application container, right? Yeah, but but I think even, even if you compare the idea of browsing Swarm, I think it really, you are, you'll probably be browsing Swarm into a specific application because I think it really reflects the way we use the web today. Most of the time, people are spending the, their time in Facebook and Reddit on very specific sites. So I can really foresee you like having a decentralized Reddit, a decentralized Facebook, and you spend your time there browsing, you're browsing Swarm, but you're browsing Swarm via one specific app. And I think that's, that's very Which interesting. Which is an interface, yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it could also be raw content you could browse. And then this yeah, raw content could be interlinked somehow. But yeah, definitely. So it's, it's really an app container. And it's probably not for the newcomer. So the newcomer will rather use either like this. Where, so dApps will for sure be on servers for a period of time or using things like MetaMask, like this browser in browser. And um, that's probably for newcomers interesting because they can start the dApp. It works right away. It's kind of like secure and they can already interact with it. But once they actually have a use for themselves with this dApp, they will use Mist just because it's it's a proper tool, it's a desktop application. You start when you want to do something and, yeah. And um, so have, uh, have you, have you, has your wallet f found some users or? Um... Oh, quite a lot actually. I mean like, uh, <laughs> so just when we released the last beta three uh, and I created uh, the mist token, just for fun, like a bunch of people requesting me to get Miss Token, and I sent a batch of Miss yeah. Tokens out. Did, did you see that some crazy guy created a, a fake Bitcoin token? Yeah. He just created like 21 million fake Bitcoins in each other and he's distributed. So I, I think it's funny to see people creating contracts because I really want that. I want people to be playing with contracts, just like inventing like cryptocurrencies for fun, inventing, I, I don't know, Crazy it's actually, schemes it's actually and very accessible. I mean, yeah. even as a tech, non-technical person, the only thing uh, in the upcoming release when we have even contract execution and so on in, but better divided that it's like ni nicer separated, sending funds and executing contract. But uh, what it allows you to do is to not only like send cryptocurrencies around like in other, other cryptocurrencies, but it also allows you to interact with contracts, deploy your own contracts, see how it works, play around with it, executing it, and doing even as complex things as we saw today with the DAO, which is, a, I mean, under the hood, a pretty complex thing. Like you have one contract interacting with another, then executing something through that contract and so on. I mean, this is pretty hot shit already. Yeah, because so. I, I think it takes Ethereum from that abstract idea that people are excited to into something that they can actually play with. And I'm, I'm very excited to see people play and invent things that we, we yeah. haven't expected. And they have obviously fun. I mean, I have fun doing it. It's, yeah. it's very, it's, it's, it's definitely already starting. So what, what we wanted to intend with this early release cycle is we want to get f user feedback and we want people to, um, yeah, just to see also that what is happening, right? Like if you, people don't check normally GitHub, so, and then when it's happening in another branch and they cannot see in the craft that there's activity, they even think, oh, it's dead. You know, and when it's dead, the price goes down because it's, it's dead, it's the next scam coin co gone, right? <laughs> so we want actually to release these kind of things, even they are not fully ready yet, just so people see what is going on because there's so much produced every day. I mean, the crypto, uh, like especially Ethereum is such a vibrant community, only, the people who are working on Ethereum working every day on such a mound of stuff and then we have all the startups around it and all this huge community building things. It's definitely the most and, uh, active. So what are you going to release next? So our next pro or our next beta release, four, yeah, it will be beta four, which is we are going to take exactly what we've shown here on the presentation. We are going to we are going to, to make it more releasable because we we kind of did a lot of work to be able to present it, and we want we want to to release that as a beta four. Then I would say that we will probably it will probably be around the time that Homestead is going to be is going to be out, so we can probably. F really polish it to be the Homestead release of the wallet because Homestead in Ethereum is really, I mean, everyone has a different definition. Uh, Vitalik has the definition of four weeks without real bugs, but I see it more like a, a, a moment where Ethereum has real 
graphical application that everyone can use, that it's not only like common line developer things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like Ethereum has skin and uh, a face instead exactly, exactly. To, this, uh, to this skeleton that is the blockchain. Exactly, so everyone can use it. And after the Homestead release, I plan that we will stop working on the on the wallet and we will be working only on the, on, on the MIST side. Actually, yeah. so. so I mean, currently, so from a technical perspective, so what I see is a few things to do, for example, like I would like to exchange the under the hood uh, contract. Uh, here's the boss. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I would like to uh, uh, exchange the under the hood uh, wallet contract to make it easier accessible and like actually it's like cleaning up and then the wallet is actually ready ready for prime time and then it's really focusing on mist and the interface and uh, um, improving it. So this is already ready but like there are things missing like I said already the, the onboarding account management and so on. Uh, there are some low level things like the new IPC coming with uh, pops up functionality but um, it's all so, all going really well. so where can our listeners find out more about MIST? What are the well, resources? Uh, you, I mean, right now we are not. It's not this is in Ethereum.org because it will, but it will, will be, be soon. But right now, the best place to find out about MIST releases is just keeping an eye on on the Reddit, on the Twitter, and you can always go to to our GitHub page, and there, that's where this latest. Yeah, Mist so you basically can go to the Mist GitHub uh, page on releases, and there you have the latest release. You can download the binary and try it out yourself. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for inviting us.